أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ثم لنحن أعلم بالذين هم أولى بها صليا وإن منكم إلا واردها كان على ربك حتما مقضيا ثم ننجي الذين اتقوا ونذروا الظالمين فيها جثيا وإذا تتلى عليهم آياتنا بينات قال الذين كفروا للذين آمنوا أي الفريقين خير مقاما وأحسن نديا وكم أهلكنا قبلهم من قرن هم أحسن أثاثا ورئيا قل من كان في الضلالة فليمدد له الرحمن مدا حتى إذا رأوا ما يوعدون إما العذاب وإما الساعة فسيعلمون فسيعلمون من هو شر مكانا وأضعف جندا ويزيد الله الذين اهتدوا هدى والباقيات الصالحات خير عند ربك ثوابا خير عند ربك ثوابا وخير مردا واذكر في الكتاب مريم إذ انتبذت من أهلها مكانا شرقيا إنما يسرناه بلسانك لتبشر به المتقين وتنذر به قوما لدا بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الحمد لله حمدا يوافي نعمه ويكافئ مزيده صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يا كريم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب زدني علما رب زدني علما رب زدني علما اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا Welcome back everyone to another episode of Embracing Quran We're discussing the surah of Maryam and we are discussing all of the details that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discussed after the stories of the prophets. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ثُمَّ لَنَحْنُ أَعْلَمُ بِالَّذِينَ هُمْ أَوْلَى بِهَا And us, i.e. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking of himself in the royal we, he says, ثُمَّ لَنَحْنُ أَعْلَمُ بِالَّذِينَ هُمْ أَوْلَى بِهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing over here the events of the hereafter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off by saying that of a surety and definitely we will resurrect everyone and also we will resurrect the disbelievers with the satans that had misled these disbelievers as well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says He will organize the people, He will organize the groups, He will organize different people based on how evil they were. Okay, So the most evil of the people will be in the forefront. Thereafter, lesser than them in evil, and so on and so forth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have the rows organized in this fashion so that those people who are the most deserving of punishment, they are the closest to the fire as they are standing on their knees before the fire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says that Allah azza wa jal is the most knowing and the best knowing of those people who are the most worthy of Going into this fire, siliyya, literally burning into this fire. The word saliyya yasla, siliyyan, it means to go into the fire and to burn. And some of the other translations of this word have it, that it actually means to simply gain warmth. You know how sometimes people sit across or close to a fireplace and they're trying to warm themselves up? So one of the meanings of this word is to sort of warm yourself up, right? So there's a bit of a mockery in there as well by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mocking these people who will be going into the fire, saying, you know, go over there and warm yourself up. It's as if this fire is not hot enough to burn you, so go, why don't you go there and warm yourself up? But in reality, when they get there, they will be burning. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who will be burning, and their skins shall melt, and it, sh- it, shall, it shall not be 
the first degree burn or a second degree burn, it will go and burn the skin and the flesh all together and it will reach all the way to the heart. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, نَارُ اللَّهِ الْمُقَدَةِ التي تطلع على الأفئدة. It's the fire of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which has been kindled and has been lit and it goes all the way to the heart and burns the heart because the real problem was deep down inside their hearts. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cleanse our hearts. Ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allah said, ثُمَّ لَنَحْنُ أَعْلَمُ بِالَّذِينَ هُمْ أَوْلَى بِهَا صِلِيَّةِ وَإِمْ مِنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا And every single one of you shall go before it. Okay? Now, some people said that this actually means that every single person will go into the fire, the believer and the non-believer. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow the fire to become coolness and peace, just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed the fire to become coolness and peace for Ibrahim alayhi salam as well. And others said, no, the word wariduha doesn't mean every single person will enter, that it just means every single person will cross. As for those people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes for them to be saved from the fire, they will cross and they will be able to cross the fire fast. Because above the fire, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made a bridge. And on that bridge, people will walk. And some people will fall into the fire. And other people will be able to cross the fire. So this is another explanation and perhaps this is the better explanation in this verse. وَإِن مِّنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا Every single person should, shall cross the fire. However, <coughs> those people However, those people who happen to be evil, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have the fire, literally take them and snatch them and they will go within this fire. As for those people who happen to be pious, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from his pious slaves, they will cross this fire and they will cross the bridge of the fire. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to cross the fire as found in certain hadith, ka'ajaweed al-khayl or ka'ajaweed al-rikab, as found in certain hadith that some people will end up crossing the fire like the best of horses or the best of those people who go on top of these horses. So meaning they'll be really, really fast. And there will be other people who will literally be crawling through the fires. And other, other people will be almost about to fall. They will almost fall into the fire and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save them. And others will actually fall within this fire as well. وَإِن مِّنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا كَانَ عَلَىٰ رَبِّكَ حَتْمًا مَقْضِيَّةً However, this test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a test that you can just you know, leave. Every single person will be examined in this manner. This is a decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hatman, definitely. Maqdiyan, on top of that, that hatam, that the fact that it's definite, that is also a decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is very, very emphatic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying it's definite. And that definite surety is so sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who's decreed it. And of course, if Allah has decreed it, there is nothing that can that can ward it off. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ثُمَّ نُنَجِّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ Then, there will be those people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will preserve. Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal will save. So as we said, not every single person will be going into the fire as opposed to one of the opinions that we mentioned. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save certain people. ثُمَّ نُنَجِّ الَّذِينَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ so then we will save those people who ended up fearing Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. Inna al-ladhina sabaqat lahum min al-husna ulaika anha mub'adun. That those people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already given them favor by the merit of His decree, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will distance those people from the fire. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to distance us from the fire. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ثُمَّ نُنَجِّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقُوا Then we will save those people who have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, my dear brother, my dear sister, the word taqwa, it comes from the word wiqayah, which is a protection. So the person who has taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, literally he places insulation around him and sin. He places insulation around him and evil. He places an insulation around him and a protection around him from all of the things that distance him from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He seeks this protection he seeks this insulation through two means. A, he ends up implementing all of the guidances that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded him with. And B, he ends up avoiding all the evils that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden. So there's two different parts to taqwa then. 
The first part is the implementation of the guidances that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted and the implementation of all of the obligations and all of the binding rules that Allah Rabbul Izzati wa Jalal commanded us with. And B is to stay away from all of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbid. So basically, in short, to implement the awamir Allah azza wa jal and to stay away from the nawahi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To implement the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to stay away from those things that Allah Rabbul Izzati wa Jalal has forbidden. The person who ends up doing this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places around him an insulation. An insulation of faith which literally almost, you know, shuns away the evils that come his direction. And he's within divine protection then and aid. ثُمَّ نُنَجِّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا So those people who ended up fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the means of implementation of the guidances of Allah, and those people who ended up fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through avoiding those things that Allah has forbidden, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enter them into Jannah by saving them from hellfire. وَنَذَرُ الظَّالِمِينَ However, there are those people who will <coughs> be the transgressors, who are the transgressors. These transgressors and these oppressors, the people who have oppressed themselves by disobeying Allah, the people who have not fulfilled the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by not fulfilling those commandments that Allah had granted them and given them, and by not staying away from those things that Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal had forbidden, those people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنَذَرُ الظَّالِمِينَ We will leave these people in the hellfire. You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will in fact allow everyone to be before the fire, even if they don't go into the fire. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those people who Allah has favored by the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by God consciousness, these people will be saved. By scrupulousness, by wara, these people will be saved from the fire and the other people, they will remain there. Because Allah didn't say Allah will place them there. All of them will be placed there first, right? They will all be crossing the Qantara, the bridge. So all of them are actually there. But the ones who have been saved, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves them. The ones who have not been saved, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves them in those locations. وَنَذَرُ الظَّالِمِينَ فِيهَا جِثِيَّةٍ And Allah leaves them there in the most despicable of postures. You see, whenever you are at the mercy of anyone, right? And sometimes we see this perhaps in television, on movies, and perhaps just in real life as well, if you happen to be in such a circumstance. People, when they want to show that they are at the mercy of you or someone else and so on and so forth, they end up literally standing on their knees, right? That's the posture of al-jathu. That's when a person ends up doing jathu before you, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah will leave these people, these despicable people who oppress themselves and they did not fulfill the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a posture of humiliation, and that is the posture of jathu, jathu where they're literally sitting before Allah Rabbul Izzati wa Jalal in a posture on their knees. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be entered into Jannah and saved from the fire. Jazakumullahu khairan for listening. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. كتاب أنزلناه إليك مبارك ليتدبروا آياته وليتذكر أول الألباب. Through the powerfully vivid, spiritually uplifting, heart-softening, life-changing, soul-transforming descriptions of life after death. We reminded ourselves about the barrier that is placed. So once you leave this world, a barrier is placed behind you and you are prevented from coming back to this life. Those two rak'ahs that you used to pray, you used to take for granted. After you leave this world, there's a barrier. The journey of the soul through the stages of the Day of Resurrection and the explicit descriptions of Hellfire as well as the beautiful and spiritually uplifting descriptions of Paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, we did not create the heavens and the earth without purpose, without aim, without reason. This is the assumption of those who disbelieve. So beware and low to those who disbelieve from the Hellfire. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us immediately the example of the righteous people on the Day of Judgment. 
So he says, أَلَا إِنَّ أَوْلِيَاءَ اللَّهِ لَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, No doubt, verily, the awliya of Allah, the friends of Allah, those who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no fear on them. كتاب أنزلناه إليك مبارك ليدبروا آياته وليتذكر أولو الألباب بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الحمد لله حمدا يوافي نعمه ويكافئ مزيده صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يا كريم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب زدني علما رب زدني علما رب زدني علما اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا Welcome back everyone as we continue to discuss the surah of Maryam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about these people who will be left within the fire and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وإذا تتلى عليهم آياتنا بينات he says, well, this is a choice that they made on their own. It wasn't as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted these people to be entered into the fire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wished that they were entered into Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wishes for every single person the best and the goodness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't wish for people evil. Rather, He wishes for them good. But it's the, choice that, the choices that people make on their own that ends up leading them to hellfire, that ends up leading them a direction that they don't please. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, listen, وَإِذَا تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُنَا بَيِّنَاتٍ They're still within this world. They have room and time to make choices that will lead to their betterment in the hereafter. When the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are recited upon them, وَإِذَا تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُنَا Now the word إِذَا, it has within this connotation of, of hoping for it to occur. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes for the occurrence of the recitation of the ayat upon these people, all people across the world. And that's why he sent messengers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent in every single nation a messenger. وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا Every single nation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed within that nation a messenger. Why? أَنِ عَبُودُ الله. So that people may end up worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal just does in fact wish for people to worship Him Right? But it's people who make choices that lead them in other direction. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُنَا When these ayat of mine are recited upon the people, and notice he says, وَإِذَا And we said this has within this word a feeling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala almost longing for the verses to be recited. And then Allah uses a fi'il, a verb, which happens to be the future tense. And the word, all verbs which are future tense, they have within this connotation of recurrence. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't wish for the ayat to be recited upon the world and humanity once. Rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hopes for it to occur again and again and again and again. And that is the hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by which, because of which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent messengers and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated da'wah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed us to spread the call as well and encouraged us to spread the call just what we're doing right now as well Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when these verses of mine are recited upon them bayinat which are absolutely clear you see verses which are clear they are their clarity should be enough of a reason for them to ex accept these verses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't just send ayat signs because the word ayah literally means a sign. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't just send verses of the Qur'an which are ayat, which are signs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made these signs very clear as well. Bayinat, even though they are signs, even though they happen to be clear, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qala alladheena kafaru, even though they're clear and they're signs, those people who disbelieve, they continue to disbelieve. Qala alladheena kafaru, those people who disbelieved will say, Lilladheena amanu. For those people who are believers, they will, they will say to those people who are believers, 
خَيْرٌ مَقَامًا وَأَحْسَنُ نَدِيًّا Which one of the two groups happens to be خَيْرٌ مَقَامًا happens to have a better house, happens to have a better station, happens to have a better place within this life, وَأَحْسَنُ نَدِيًّا and also happens to have a better social circle as well, right? Those are the two things that people always boast about. They boast about their houses and they boast about <coughs> the people that they live with as well and the people that they hang with as well. And the people in certain cultures, they would say, the people that they roll with as well, right? So those are the two types of things that people always boast about. My neighborhood, my house, the way my car is, and so on and so forth. Specifically the house. Now if you happen to be very wealthy, then the, not only are you going to be boasting about your house, you're also going to be boasting about, in addition to the neighborhood and the house and so forth, you're going to be boasting about the type of furniture you were able to place within uh, the house as well, right? So people may be living on the same street and people may have the same house, meaning it's the same size, right? But one of them looks beautiful and the other one doesn't look very beautiful. So keep that in mind because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to capitalize on that reality. These people are saying what? That our station is very good, our house is very good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to capitalize on this meaning that they happen to be saying and go a step further and talk about the furniture they're in as well. So they're saying that we happen to have a better house. We happen to have a better social circle. And we happen to have a better social affiliation. We are from the aristocracy of our society. So how dare you think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will actually make us people who are lowly and crude, who are not really served in the hereafter and who might, be end up, who might end up going into the hellfire. That right there happens to be flawed logic according to them, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, listen to this. وَكَمْ أَهْلَكْنَا قَبْلَهُمْ مِنْ قَرْنٍ هُمْ أَحْسَنُ أَثَاثًا وَرِئِيًا How many people and how many groups and how many nations did we end up literally demolishing and taking apart and destroying who used to be more better than you people, O people of Quraysh, who used to be better than you as well, in terms of the athath, in terms of the furniture. Remember they were talking about their houses, right? And as I said, a person could be on the same street and they have the same size house, but 10 years down the road, one of the houses looks beautiful because the person that owns this place had the money to continuously develop and, and restructure the house. So it became a beautiful, you know, nice looking place. Whereas 10 years later, another house that was owned by a person who was not so wealthy, even though it's the same size, it starts to become you know, really old and rusty and crusty and so on and so forth, right? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you think you got good houses? There were people who had good furniture as well, in addition to those houses. There were people who had the money to end up maintaining and, 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 and keeping this house in a clean way as well. They were better than you in furniture and they were better than you in looks as well. Wari'iyah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was able to destroy all of them. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed all of them, what are you so boastful about? What makes you think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not do the same to you? What makes you think that Allah rabbul izzati wal jalal is not going to be able to hold you account to account? What makes you think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to grasp, not going to, you know, basically destroy you when it comes to your attitude? Of course, the reality is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be able to destroy you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has destroyed those who are more powerful than you, O Quraysh, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed Ad, the people of Hud, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed Thamud, the people of Salih. So you, O people of Quraysh, are much, much more weaker than Ad and Thamud. And you hear the stories of Ad and Thamud, and you know the Mada'in Salih, you know the places that are the remains of the people of Salih, Thamud. But still you happen to continue, you continue to indulge in this behavior and this attitude. Cut it out. Because the reality is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able and capable to destroy you as well, O people of Quraysh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues. And he says, قُلْ مَنْ كَانَ فِي الضَّلَالَةِ You know, before we go over there, let's take a look at those two qualities. Those two qualities that these people of Quraysh were mocking the believers at the time of the Prophet about. They were mocking the believers about two qualities. They were saying we happen to be more wealthy than you and they were saying we happen to have 
a better and a stronger committee than you. We happen to have a better and a stronger social circle than you, right? And the reality is that is because of their flawed logic and that is because they're using a bad index as well. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made <coughs> a, the wealth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it not an index within this world for goodness. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants wealth to the person who happens to be pious. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also grants wealth to a person who happens to be impious, someone who's not so pious. So wealth in and of itself intrinsically is not an index for piety and it's also not an index for goodness as well. So your logic, O people, is flawed. And that's why the Prophet wasallam he told us in a hadith, لو كانت الدنيا تعدل عند الله جناح بعوضة ما سقى كافرا شربتما That if the dunya was to be equivalent to just a wing of a mosquito, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wouldn't have given a disbeliever even just a a sip of water, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave disbelievers sips of water, and even more than that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a lot of wealth as well. And that's a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't consider this entire dunya, with everything within it, equivalent to even just a wing of a mosquito. That's how insignificant the dunya is to Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives wealth to whomever He wills. And sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives wealth to people as a test. And other times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives wealth to people as a means for them to increase themselves in reward. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, as found in a hadith Qudsi, that from my slaves are those for whom nothing is good except poverty, poverty. And if I were to give them wealth, then I would have corrupted their religion for them. And from my slaves are those for whom nothing is good except affluence and if I were to make them poor then I would have corrupted their religion for them. And the Prophet ﷺ, he would also show through his example that there are two states that a human be being can be. He can be in the state of patience and he can be in the state of gratitude. Whenever the Prophet ﷺ was granted wealth, Allah's Messenger ﷺ would show gratitude by giving up that wealth for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to a degree that the Prophet ﷺ gave to one person livestock that was between two mountains, entirely so between two mountains. The Messenger ﷺ gave it up all in sadaqah. So this person, he went back to his people, he said, Ya qawm, O people, aslimu fa inna muhammadan yu'ti ata'a man la yakhsh al Accept Islam because Muhammad ﷺ, he gives a grant of a person who is not afraid of poverty. So he, was, he had gratitude there. And similarly, during the times of, of poor poverty, the Prophet ﷺ maintained his patience. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us maintain gratitude and patience. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Jazakumullahu khairan for listening. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa adhkur fi al-kitab Maryam idhin tabadat min ahliha makanan sharqiyya. إليك بجذع النخلة تساقط عليك رطبا جنيا فإنما يسرناه بلسانك لتبشر به المتقين وتنذر به قوما لدًا